The habit is, not giving too many F this is different from not giving a single F. Not giving a F is not practical. I know this advice gets thrown around a lot, especially in red pill. And it's not altogether bad advice, but it's definitely incomplete. Giving a F is important. I go to the gym and eat well because I give a F about my health. I call my girlfriend and plan romantic surprises because I give a F about her and our relationship. I go to work and save my money because I give a F about my finances and about the future Howie being in a better financial position than present Howie. There's a lot I give a F about, and I challenge all the don't give a F evangelists out there to prove that any of these habits make me a lesser man or less attractive to the women in my life. I'm pretty sure my argument to the contrary is a hell of a lot stronger. Where the don't give a F crowd has it partially right is in the matter of obsessing over what other people think about you. You can't control what other people think. You can treat people well. You can show them respect and courtesy, but in the end, you have no power over whether they think you're a moron, or a hero, or anything else. A lot of us are in the habit of hinging our self-esteem to the judgments of others. When other people like me, when my parents approve of me, when I meet some arbitrary requirement about wealth, etc. I'm a good person. When I fall short of the expectations of others, I'm bad. This sort of mentality leads to shame, anxiety, low self-esteem, and all sorts of stuff that will hold you back and make you feel like shit. The difference between obsessing over external approval and having a healthy attitude is how you decided what you give a F about. Do the things that determine your self-worth come from inside you or outside? Do you have worth when you're meeting reasonable goals you chose yourself? Or are you defining your worth based on how well you're meeting standards set by other people? The less control you have over the things you use to determine your self-worth, the worse your self-esteem will be. If those things are the opinions of others, or partially random events, like financial success, you'll never have control over your self-worth. You'll always feel understandably insecure, and you'll exhibit behaviors associated with low social status, and that a lot of people find unattractive. To put it in psychological terms, you will have an external locus of control. The solution is to adopt a mentality along the lines of I have worth when I am meeting my goals and living according to my values. You want to be the sort of person who gives a F about himself and how he treats other people, but he does so on his own terms. Not because he thinks he only has worth when he's satisfying the judgments of others. In other words, I want to be friendly with the people at the party. I want to treat them well and it would be cool if they liked me. But if they don't, I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't affect my self-worth. We're just not the right people for each other, and we'll all move on. That's the mentality you want. Since you, like most people, have probably spent most of your life being manipulated by others and systematically taught not to think in this way, shifting your mindset to an internally focused one takes some doing. Personally, I made the shift through two techniques. First, cognitive behavioral therapy, which involves consciously talking back to the self-limiting thoughts in your mind that are holding you back. When the voice in your head tells you I'm a worthless piece of shit, you consciously talk back to that voice. Shut the F up. You're wrong. I'm awesome. Both perspectives are totally arbitrary. The one you'll habitually think of is whichever one you practice more often. So practice the I'm awesome thoughts. Essentially, you are looking to alter your behavior and emotional state by addressing the thoughts that generate them, and not letting the negative thoughts have the final or dominant word. The second tool I used was cognitive dissonance. We humans don't like to believe two contradictory thoughts at the same time, and when we do, we feel uncomfortable. If I believe, I care about my health, but I smoke cigarettes. One of those things has to change. Either I have to stop smoking cigarettes, or I have to convince myself that cigarettes aren't unhealthy, or that I don't actually value my health. Usually, our beliefs will shift in order to match our behaviors, not the other way around. Knowing this, by forcing yourself to behave in a self-compassionate way, in a way that demonstrates you believe you are a valuable person worth treating well. You will systematically shift your perception of yourself into one that's more self-actualizing. Just as with CBT, we were changing our thoughts to change our emotions and behaviors. With cognitive dissonance therapy, we're shifting our behavior to change our thoughts. One of the other might work better for you. I recommend doing both. The more you can think and act like a guy who values himself, the less you'll obsess over how much other people approve of you. You get your approval from yourself and you live according to your own values. As long as your good treatment of other people is coming from your own internal desires, and not out of a desperate need for external approval, 
You'll be getting all of the benefits of the so-called don't give a f attitude as well as the benefits of being a socially adept, friendly person. In my opinion, this is a lot better than being your cliche alpha who treats everyone like shit, including himself, because he doesn't give a f in my opinion. That's just the other side of a toxic coin. Hope this helps you out. Good luck on your journey.